welcome back to the Cotswolds. This expanse of golden stone houses and rolling green valleys spreads over five different counties. For today, this is the stage for a true country tradition, the Driven Game Shoot. We're going to be shooting at Brimsfield Park, a 2,000 acre estate, and we're here for a 200 bird pheasant day over four very different drives. It was a day full of laughter, gunfire, and even a touch of off-roading. Welcome back to the Cotswolds. Today we're going to be shooting four drives at Brimsfield Park, mainly pheasant, smattering of partridge, and I have brought a 20 bore. I'm a little nervous, but I know they can do the job, just about getting it in there, right? Let's head for a coffee before we start. All the best days start with a full English. What better way to start getting to know your fellow guns? Soon though, it was time to head off for a briefing with our host for the day, Ben Hughes. Welcome, welcome to Brimsfield Park. Today you are seven guns. You're numbering from the right to the left and you'll move up two after each drive. I wanna give you the best day I can possible. There'll be plenty of gaps between you and so you can stretch and you four who have come together and no doubt you'll be stretching for your mate's birds anyway. So you'll have some fun. Your numbers are on your bottles and when Johnny I think you last came was in Covid and there were people thinking this was hand washed. This is a little barrel straightener so you are allowed to drink this, don't get washing your hands with it. Other than that guys enjoy yourselves, I'll be looking after you all day. We'll be back here, four elevenses and then we'll do a further two drives down in the parkland, okay? There'd been a heap of rain this week. And as we squelched over the fields to the first drive, you could see that today was going to test our boots and vehicles. Welcome to peg one, everybody. We're at the top of the hill. The birds should pile down this way. Apparently we'll get a few as the drive gets going a bit more straight, but early doors, they're bringing this whole bog around. So let's see where we're going. We've got 28 grand four and a half today in a 20 ball. Technically speaking, that load should be well sufficient. But, you yeah, know, I still like that 20 ball thing in my head. And because I could, I borrowed an SL3 20 ball game gun. I love the 12 ball, like, a lot. The 20 ball, no detachable trigger, way sleeker, much smaller. The stock might a little be a little bit short, but, um, hey, we'll make do for today. We'll have some fun. Whew. First drive nerves. Never have I picked up a gun and got on this well with it straight away. The nerves were gone, and I now had the confidence that today was gonna be great. Oh, that was a very different drive to expect it. The straight driven's nice, but this stuff out the right hand side is absolutely mega. There was two partridge there I missed, curling and dropping at like 45 yards. I was happy to miss them. I'd have been happy to hit them, but oh, now they just calm the adrenaline. First three birds were down, two simple ones coming off the back edge, and then a big nice right across her. That was a, a nice moment in time. After that, it was downhill for a bit, but so far, I'm liking this combo. I mean, I appreciate that 28 grams of four and a half is an adequate 12 board load and that there's plenty of people who will tell me off for not doing a job with a small board that's supposed to be done, but baby steps to being a gentleman. Drive over. Let's pick up our empties, of which there is a few too many. When you go on your first day at a new shoot, you never know what the day is gonna throw at you. So I think it's important to shoot a few on the first drive and then relax and be selective for the rest of the day. Time for the second drive. My van won't get anywhere, so we're hopping with Ben. That was a good warm-up. It's a nice, simple drive to start, and I think it's a nice thing when you go somewhere and they don't just stick you straight into, the, like, hell. Let's go miss stuff. Yes, power! See, this is like it's the four by four experience. It's not Full all countryside. About power, it's always about power. No. Hit it with speed, you'll make it through. <laughs> Even if it's upside down. You're the first one through. There's never an issue to be that. See, this looks worse. Windows up. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've noticed, Ben. No one else is behind us. Well, that was fun. Everyone Woo. made it. Just. 
Yes, well, we did leave a few cars behind, so not worry about that. So there is a correct way to take a gun out of a slip. It's to take it to there, grab the forend, top lever over, break it so everyone knows it's open, and then remove the rest. Shot cam on. I never used to use a shot cam for game shooting. And now I kind of really like it as a memory maker, but also when you have one of those drives, it's always interesting to see where you went wrong. New drive, hill in front of us, little cocks with a crop behind it. Pick number three. Let's go. That was out of nowhere, I wasn't ready for I mean, I should be ready, we stood on peg, but I wasn't ready. This is actually Owen's first ever shoot day. Owen has a lot of questions, so we're gonna have a little Q&A, which is probably dumb, seeing as peg three, and looking where we are, could well be a half decent peg. But we're gonna try anyway, aren't we, Owen? Yes, we are. What sort of range are we looking at? So, interestingly, most people overestimate the range of birds. So this bird here, from me now, is 45 yards and it is still 45 yards. <laughs> a shotgun, certainly depending on choke and load, you can safely shoot birds at 15 yards without blowing them up if you use the appropriate gear. So I have a three quarter and a quarter in here. The quarter choke at 20 yards will be absolutely fine with these cartridges. The three quarter chokes we found on the first drive, probably a little bit much. But when a bird is 20 yards, it's often then better for your neighbor. Given your neighbor is 35 yards and we're 20 yards up, triangulation would dictate that that is Triangulation would say that's about a 40 yard bird. So it's often better to leave something for your neighbor than it is to shoot it yourself. You can really optimize the performance of a shotgun to give you a dead bird and a clean bird, AKA not put too much shot in it. Get it? Better for you. What are you looking out for knowing when to shoot? So there's a my bird, their bird thing. Then when you get to a peg, you look where the crop is, where the birds will be flushed from, so you get a good idea where they're gonna come from. A little bit of wind. You also look where they might be going to. So there's a big wood right behind us and there's a big wood over the valley. So one would have thought the birds will either go that way or that way. So there will be birds over us, but we're gonna start seeing them curl off there or curl out there more than come straight over us on this peg. You're then looking to see if the bird is your neighbor's, meaning is it going towards your neighbor? Will it be a better bird for them? Is it just greedy to shoot it? And that can be quite a tough one. And when you know the team, you know that you can work in each other's birds. Imagine if you like when you're on a peg, you're a 45 degree yard in front of you. That starts at the height of the nearest tree and goes up as far as you like and down to the trees behind you. That is your sphere that are yours. The key things you're looking for are a bird that is at a good range for the equipment you've brought. So I left that because it wasn't quite high enough and there's better birds coming. Look at that, what a monster. and a safe bird. Does it have blue sky behind it? You're not flagging people with your barrels. Is it better to be strategical or reactive when shooting? Strategical makes sense. Having a plan, sticking to it. Obviously in the moment, you just do your thing. See the bird, work your feet out, plan the shot you're gonna to take to as much as an extent as you can. On a drive like this, you've got plenty of time to see the birds, go for it. Certainly in more snap shooting environments, meaning you've got trees either side of you, you will just be a case of there it is, bang, and there will be a lot more instinct into it. But good training and good moves in those situations also help. There's no doubt about that. You can't just be throwing guns at things and hoping to hit them. Although I still do that all the damn time and wonder why I don't hit. Oh, wow, here you go. Bang, shot. Is there a number of birds that you're supposed to shoot? Or is, like, is there a polite etiquette? Yeah, oh, there is. You can obviously work it out, right? Let's say it's a 200 bird day with 10 guns. Easy maths, that's 20 birds each, four drives, five birds a drive. Obviously it doesn't work out like that. There will be better shooters and worse shooters. There'll be people in hotter pegs and colder pegs. Providing that you don't just make the most of every opportunity that's given to you, AKA kill everything, you'll be good. You also never know what the day's gonna hold. So it's worth not standing there with birds pouring over you and not killing them. If you've had enough, you don't need to shoot them. Like we're not here to, to kill them all. That's not the point, really. Hit that both times back end is not what we want. Might not. So it's going to cross us now. Just saw that big crosser off the bat there. That was in my airspace, if you like, but it would have made a better bird for someone else. And often, it's best just to leave them when they're like that. I'm happy with that as a last bird, right? And this is what it's all about. If you can finish a drive feeling proud of every shot, that's, um... I mean, it's not how you should begin your journey in shooting by any means, but it's this at the point I'm at, and that's 
I don't know, I'm happy with it. You don't need to shoot at everything. Pick your birds, take your time. We're on for a decent bag today. There's gonna to be no rush. Everyone else can shoot what they want. There's no judgments, but it does feel good when you pick the best of the best and just actually connect. Everybody found their flow on this second drive. Everyone shot a couple of birds to remember. And now all that stood between us and 11s is was a very wet hill. Don't think that was supposed to happen. With a bunch of rooster tails, curious trails, and even a bit of teamwork, there we, go. we managed to get all of these vehicles out of the swamp and on the road to Elevenses. We stood around the yard putting the world to rights whilst working through a tailgate full of food. Then packed our things to head out to the third drive set in a typical Cotswold Valley. White bird, white bird, white bird, white bird. We could kill a few here if we really got stuck yeah, in. Bird, Tell you what, I break this gun. Go on then. Have we shot that many cartridges already? <laughs> yes, you have. You're keeping up my selective. I just want to go back to the quarry drive quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I actually only had six shots there and I had six birds. Is that true? Um, Johnny made I don't remember that. 50 empties, and that was not me. Was it not? I remember it very differently. Some good birds off of there. You could shoot as many as you wanted if you want to, but you we, wait and you're patient, you are rewarded. Yeah, first week in January, and we've pulled the first two drives. There we go. You did get a bit worried. Oh, me too. Like, prick the first two. I mean, you hit them. They're, they're, they're on the floor but it wasn't convincing. Yeah. You shoot, I've had my six shots. Is that six? It felt a bit more like 10. I'm glad you can count. I shouldn't have been so damn selective. <laughs> <laughs> nah, lake next. I really enjoyed sharing that drive with Ben. Sharing a peg brings a heap more conversation and fun to a potentially somber and lonely day on peg. As we headed across the estate, Owen continued his education on driven shooting. Safety is the biggest key for etiquette. If I have novices come here or, or back to the home estate, I will always introduce them with an experienced loader. The mentors will help them pick and choose through which ones to shoot. If, if you've got a slightly lower bird coming through, the mentor might say, no, we'll leave that one because we know we've got something coming through a bit later. No different to what you were doing on that last drive, Johnny. Also making sure you've shot enough clays to be competent that you are going to be killing what you shoot at. This is solid advice. Learn to handle a gun and be humble enough to have a mentor. It's time for the final drive, aptly named Lake. Last drive of the day, Ben. Lake. This looks big. Yeah, it's, it's actually one of my favorite drives. It was the first one when taking a drive around with Archie earlier in the year before we sort of came to our agreement. It's the drive where I went, okay. I'm having some of this. I'm looking forward to this. Let's load Good. up. Most of the pegs on this drive were set out in the water on brand new pontoons. My peg, however, was on an island with the sketchiest looking bridge I had ever seen. I know the shop cam's waterproof, the gun can be cleaned and I'll dry out, but that bridge, I mean, I'm sure it's safe, but I didn't feel it. I'm a pretty heavy guy, 
so I tentatively shuffled across it before getting the gun ready and letting the intimidation of these tall trees ahead sink in. Shot. Very nice. Cartridge left. I need to wake up. These are big birds. Yeah, you do, boy. There's a good one, I think. Shot, that's better, and again. I mean, that was a lot of lead for nothing. <laughs> Do you want me to have a little look? Yeah, please. Pick up, and I can have a little look where I'm at. But... <laughs> I'll try. I don't mind admitting that I was struggling with these birds. After a few frustrating misses, I thrust the gun on Ben to show me how it was done. Yeah, a lot less leaves than I thought from those feathers. Yeah. Nice. After a morning of open drives, these birds were on you high and fast over the trees with little time to read height or line. Come on, Johnny, make a hero. Shot! Yay! Yeah, bring it back. And a bit like we did on the last day. We'll Just finish. Need a sight. We'll, are we going to finish on a good one? <laughs> no. Oh, okay, we're definitely finishing on that now. Absolute perler. You just need to come back on them a little bit. Once no, again, it's... awesome to share a day with you. Well done, mate. Thank you. Well done. Despite a mixture of excitement, tiredness, and lack of talent getting in the way, I really enjoyed the lake drive. In fact, the whole day was executed flawlessly from the sporting birds and beautiful scenery to the great hospitality. Today was a great example of what a day on a commercial shoot should be. Ben, thank you very much for today, mate. Did you enjoy your day? I really did. That progression of heights throughout the day was something that I haven't experienced in a long time, and it was a good confidence boost until you gave me the kick in uh, at the lakes. As a lesson in having to read birds, that lakes drive was as good as any. Last thing before we headed back down south was to receive our game card. This is a memento of the day with drive names, guns names, and total bag contained within. This and the memories of today will stay with me for years to come. Thanks to Ben for having us and to you for sharing today with me. Take care guys. We'll see you soon. Thank you for watching guys. This channel is made possible by our amazing sponsors. You can find out more about them in the description down below. And if you want to support the channel, you can join as a member. You get loads of extra content, well, some extra content, and occasionally we hook up and go clay shooting together as a membership group. If you don't feel like joining today, we really appreciate you watching and subscribing. Have a wonderful day.